Today, a very nice man from Audi has given me the key to this, which has to be the brightest Audi SUV I have ever seen. Now, the reason for this Gaudi Audi paint job is to indicate that this is a prototype. Now, we've been used to having early drives of cars before, but this one is particularly important because the underpinnings of this Q6 will be the basis of lots of posh future Volkswagens, Audis and Porsches. So let's see what it's like. So you might know how the VW ID3 and the Cupra Born, the Audi Q4 and the Skoda Enyaq all have the same bits underneath, motors and batteries, etc. So this new Q6 has the same bits underneath that will go under the new Audi A6 e-tron and also things like the Porsche Macan and a series of other posh Volkswagen Group cars. Audi says the bits underneath the Q6 will, and I'm doing imaginary quote marks here with my fingers, redefine the industry's benchmarks in terms of performance, range and charging. Hmm. The figures I've seen for the Q6 make that look like a bit of an exaggeration, but they're certainly impressive. And I think once that hardware is in a lower, lighter, more aerodynamic car like a A6 Saloon, the efficiency is going to get a boost. But even in this SUV shape, it doesn't do too badly. It gives a range of more than 600 kilometres, which is 375 miles, from a whopping 100 kilowatt hour battery. That matches the BMW iX, trumps the Mercedes EQS SUV and beats them both for efficiency. The Audi wins at the charge point too, accepting up to 270 kilowatts at a rapid charger, meaning it takes just 10 minutes to add over 150 miles of range on a big enough point, and it will do a 10 to 80% charge in less than half an hour. And remember that's on a battery which is twice the size of a pack in the Vauxhall Astra Electric and a third bigger than a Tesla Model Y's. Another interesting feature which customers apparently love is that this has two charging flaps. So this one here does both AC and DC, so this is where you rapid charge but you can use it at home as well. And on the other side it's just got the AC, but that's perfect if you've got a tricky parking space at home or in the office. The Q6 name probably gives away where this car fits in the Audi lineup. It's smaller than a Q8 e-tron, but bigger than a Q4. It's due to go on sale by the end of 2023 with a price I've been promised will start with a 5. I think that means in the 50,000s rather than a 5er. Shame. That's still going to be decent value though, since a BMW iX3 starts at £64,000. Let's see how it drives, mainly because I won't have to look at the paint job when I'm inside the car. Now you may notice that I've fitted a very special optional extra to the car today, and that's Johannes here. And he's this car's minder. Now because it's a precious prototype, they have to make sure that I'm not going to break it or do anything that I shouldn't or uh, crash into a tree. Does he look a bit worried to you? I think we go to the same barber as well, do we? Yeah. yeah. So this platform, which is what it's called in car terms, is called PPE, which is nothing to do with face masks. It's called Premium Platform Electric. And this version, which is the 55, has two motors which produce 375 horsepower. But if you ask it really nicely, it will give you an extra 20 horsepower if you want to accelerate to get past a, a line of traffic or something, which is nice. Audi say it's enough for a 0 to 60 time of under six seconds. That's plenty fast enough, but you won't win many bragging competitions in a world where the MG4 can manage it in less than four seconds. If you're worried about being overtaken by your under managers as you pull out of the office car park, you can always save up the cash and buy the SQ6, which has 483 horsepower, or the extra 20 if you want to do a launch control or do an overtake. So my first impressions, it's got really lovely steering. It's unusually good, and the brakes really are quite nice. One thing I will say, there does seem to be quite a lot of wind noise and perhaps a little bit of road noise too. Maybe that will change when the car's not a prototype anymore. Now the interior of this car is covered up with some sort of blanket thing, so we're not allowed to show you what it looks like because the car hasn't been officially revealed anymore. 
there's an instrument panel in front of me with lots of nice digital things but it does still feel even though this is a prototype to have that sort of typical Audi quality and sensibleness I'm also not allowed to show you the switches but let me just say they're not like some other Volkswagen Group cars which has got to be a good thing Now, Audi claim that this car will have more than 375 miles of range. I've no reason to disbelieve it. I can't check the efficiency because there are blankets over all the screens, so I can't actually have a look at it. And this car has been sitting there with somebody in it, keeping warm while I do the rest of the filming. So it'd be a bit unfair, but it's looking pretty efficient anyway. So let's talk about my handling. Well, Johannes here won't let me do anything too brave because it's his precious prototype. And also this island has a speed limit of around 50 miles an hour. So I can't go too crazy, but I have got a good feeling for it. I really like the way the steering feels. I don't know what it is. It just feels meaty and has plenty of communication and just gives me a bit of confidence. This car is also riding on air suspension, but uh, uh, adaptive steel springs will be what you get as standard. But it rides very well, even though it's on 21 inch wheels. A word of warning about the 21 inch wheels though, if you go for the bling rims, you're gonna have to put up with slightly less range. As for the performance, well, I've gotta be wary of the speed limits around here. And also, Johan is nagging me if I go too nuts. But I can tell that it doesn't have quite that stupid grunt that you get from a Tesla or even an MGX power. But there's plenty of power here and you do get that extra boost for short moments if you want to do an overtake or you're pulling onto a motorway slip road. Another thing that Audi's gone for big time is the regen braking. So there's a B mode like you get in most cars, but in this you get a real when you lift off and you may never need to touch the brake pedal in normal driving. If that's too much for you, there are some paddles on the steering wheel here and you can adjust it to just how you like it. But the interesting part is how much difference it makes to the efficiency. Because of this car's 800 volt system, it means that they can put power back in from the motors into the battery more than you would in most other conventional cars. So at a maximum of 220 kilowatts, which is more than some rivals manage to do at a rapid charger, that means you'll be wasting less energy and getting more power back when you brake. <laughs> The technology is generally very impressive, but there's one thing that Audi is really very proud of, and that's the lights. They use a matrix of LEDs, which makes it easier to see at night and avoid dazzling other drivers. That's clever, but nothing new. What takes these to the next level is the patterns they can make. They can do useful things like warn cyclists if someone is opening a door, but owners can also choose the appearance and animation of the lights at the back and the front. There's a standard setting, of course, but there are six other signatures for daytime running lights and rear lights, which you can choose via the car's app. But you are gonna to have to pay for some of these signatures. So it's gonna be a bit like when we used to download ringtones on our old Nokias. Do you remember the crazy frog? So maybe you can, in the future, buy something twinkly for Christmas or have some love hearts on Valentine's Day. Oh God, we're soon gonna have emojis on the back of our cars, aren't we? So what do you think? Is this a bright idea or are you happy with lights which just light things? Let me know in the comments below. So after trying this slice of the future, are the headlamps the only thing which is looking bright for Volkswagen's future of its luxury cars? Well, I think this is up there with the very best, so it's looking good. But the car which gets me excited is gonna be the new Audi A6, especially in a van form. Now, I love an SUV as much as you do, but the lower car will be more efficient, probably faster too, and I think better looking. So it won't need this gaudy paint job to get you noticed. That's the car I'm looking forward to. Tell me what you think in the comments. Oh, and while you're there, please hit the like and subscribe buttons as it really helps us out and means you'll get to know first when we try the Q6 without the silly disguise on.